welcome back to the independent investor channel it's probably be one of the most important tileon videos that i put out uh, i've put out uh, a few half a dozen maybe a dozen or so videos over the course of the history of the channel it certainly does not speak to the amount of due diligence that i do offline um, as i am a, a stock owner in the company um, and a long-term bull of the company um, i've always been intrigued at the technology but up until today uh, when I was able to view the first stop in the Innovation Council Roadshow in Rochester, New York, it was the first time really that I had saw uh, not only the Hypertruck ERX in action, uh, but also the third party validation that I found was the, the key takeaway for me um, to actually hear some of the perspectives from some of the drivers as well as some of the executives and, and potentially how the Hylion solution uh, could tie into some of the uh, governance uh, objectives from Wegmans specifically. Now, this is just one uh, of the uh, 10 total uh, out of the 11 Hylion included in the Innovation Council um, that uh, it was formulated really to uh, help validate this technology. So from my perspective, I, I thought when I was watching the, the five minute video, there was a few key takeaways and, and I think there could be a, a lot of different takeaways. I had to freeze frame when they um, uh, showed between the chassis. That is the first time that I've actually got to see the components underneath the electrical systems uh, as the driver was talking about spending more time in his truck um, than he did actually at home and how important it is to make sure that the um, rigors that um, are, are incurred on the on the body uh, as they're over there driving over the road um, are minimized a, as well as the stress and, and the noise that uh, are created from from being a long haul driver. But before we get into the Wegmans video, I, I want to touch on a few housekeeping items. There's um, been an overflow uh, of information that has um, really come to a head here. I think for me, and that's why I speak about how important um, this video is at the time that I, I, I put it out there, we've been down 10 out of 11 days. And I really have never seen um, anything like this in the stock market in a stock that I've covered, owned, um, or covered and not owned. Um, it, it really just takes the cake on what I consider to be one of the greatest disconnects between what I was able to see with my own eyes today through that product validation, which is leaps and bounds ahead of anybody else out there on the market. There, there's no doubt about it, hands down. These folks have got all of the right stuff in all the right places, and they've left alone uh, the aesthetics of the truck in all the places that did not need to be improved upon. And if you hear the executives talk about you know, their importance of reducing fossil fuel in their application, this really just plays into it. And also um, the, the chairman that was actually on um, uh, the video that was being interviewed uh, talked about actually partnering with Hylion and speaking about Hylion as if they were um, going to lead the way uh, in this charge toward um, uh, decarbonization and lowering the NOx emissions that um, um, each of these uh, companies are responsible for putting out through their carbon footprint. I just thought that that was really telling. There was a lot through the five minutes that was just absolutely jam packed. I think it was easy to digress after watching five and a half minutes and be hungry for more. Certainly, um, with the um, uh, lack of uh, availability of information out on the marketplace right now, um, I think it's actually been supp supplemented quite nicely by um, Drive Mix Game. Dexter's a good friend of the family now, is doing a good job providing content that I cannot provide with regard to uh, specific validation, product validation um, that's going on uh, within Detmar Logistics, which is a frac sands company uh, down in Texas uh, that uh, has been a staunch supporter of um, the Hylion team, the Hylion product, both from the hybrid CNG perspective, as well as the Hypertruck ERX. Now, we have not got the ERX validation through Detmar. We have got the EX1 hybrid uh, validation through Detmar. And this just marks the second company 
um, in what I consider to be a, a, a template going forward for, for what to expect. Um, I left a comment in my Facebook group. It was too lengthy to leave to the actual Wegmans video. It actually got uh, uh, re- uh, held for review uh, because I think the length of the comment was um, uh, was over what they um, uh, would would allow. And so it, it pinged on their filter, which is totally fine. If you want to read my comment in its entirety, I would encourage you to kick into my Facebook group and, and check that out. All right. But at the time of filming this video and the way I want to kind of uh, express how important this is, the disconnect between what I viewed today in how close they are in getting the product validated and they only have to validate the prototype and then that prototype can be amplified tens and hundreds of thousands of times over again. And that's why these initial prototype uh, validations through third-party validations from the corporate governance uh, perspective and how the solution can fill those niches is so important. And then the driver perspective, which I think is something that has been gleaned over uh, a lot of the times. And I think that's where Dexter provides a, a lot of um, um, specific insight uh, from his perspective as a driver um, on, on how cutting edge uh, the solution actually is and could potentially be for drivers out there in the marketplace. Okay. But the, the, the stock itself, interesting enough, I do want to give you some, some of my perspectives a little bit and some things that um, really may help put this thing in perspective for you guys. Um, there's a lot of different holders out there, whether it be from hundreds of shares to thousands of shares. Okay. I typically don't compare myself um, to, to anybody out there that holds, uh, that chooses to hold a little bit of shares or a lot of shares. Furthermore, um, I, I certainly don't want my message. I feel like I'm, I'm one of the advocates. I always have been uh, on the stock. I, I say it like I see it. It is my opinion. Uh, but I, there, there, there might be some misconception going on that there is uh, an attempt to, to, to hype. Um, I, I cover stocks all the time, whether it be dividend stocks, whether it be growth stocks, whether it be ETFs that I like to invest in. And I think it really just speaks to my passion for investing. Furthermore, if I can impart to you this, the discipline that it takes to own a company like this, especially with what it's going with what's going on right now with it, it takes a lot more uh, tolerance to own an asset like this than it does an ETF or a dividend aristocrat or a king in the market. Okay, let me talk about that a little bit. I, I think a lot of people want to apply their investing strategy across the board the same, no matter what they hold, and. I think when you do that and you get involved in a specific asset, I think you underestimate sometimes what, what the opportunity that lies somewhere down the, down the line, okay? And when that opportunity doesn't make itself readily available um, within the short term, we get frustrated and we start to think about how we're missing out on somehow that long-term uh, at, at, by focusing on the future. And, and I think it's really easy to get caught up in the day-to-day. The stock's down 12 cents. The stock is down 28 cents. The stock is down 9 cents. The stock is down 6 cents. The stock is down, you know, 3 cents from day to day to day to day to day. And it really, it draws on you uh, with regard to really becoming way too laser focused which in turn creates hypersensitivity around the stock, the stock, the stock. Now, what I'd like to do is draw a conclusion between that hypersensitivity and what is actually going on at the company, okay? I'm usually somewhat of a neutral broker when I sit back and I look at the application. I have the ability to do that. I'm really proud of my ability as a, as a stock market investor, and I do share that perspective openly on YouTube, I could just as easily be a successful investor on my own without the compliments of YouTube. I don't do YouTube for any other reason other than sharing my perspective on how I approach and hopefully 
give myself the best chance of success on the market. And that's all I would ever hope for anybody out there that hears my message and doesn't take it as hyping the stock, because I don't think that really does any good. But I think there's a fine line between hyping a stock for some sort of personal gain, um, some sort of uh, personal initiative, or sharing a story passionately about a company that's looking to make the planet a safer place, aligning those solutions with other companies out there that are looking to integrate these solutions into their own fleets and are aligned with those same goals. And when I get excited about looking at the specific opportunity, the total cost of ownership proposition, when we look at the cost of renewable natural gas, the initial onset that Hylion is going to be um, serving up to these companies by way of proposals, um, when the product has gone through its full and final validation, um, when, they, when they get to pose this, my investment thesis is, is one to be excited about. And the reason for that is because I believe that Hylion is the most, uh, most um, uh, better appropriate or better positioned to make that proposal to industry than any of the other companies out there, okay? In other words, the Nikola proposition has a, a cost to hydrogen right now to the diesel uh, fuel equivalent of about $50,000 more over the life of the truck. And I've talked about this before about eliminating fossil fuels is not the standalone benefit. If eliminating fossil fuels was the standalone benefit, as admirable of a mission as that is, it has to be cost effective to the fleets. Okay, so it's something to really take a, a, take into consideration when you're looking at the bull bear thesis in Hylion. The second point I want to make is about the stock itself. Ultimately. After all the noise and after all the gray matter is separated and after everybody's done with the name calling and everybody is talking about where the stock is going to go in the short term, after all that, you're left with two decisions. And, and I think this is something that we can all rest on common ground. Um, I've even had some people in my very, very tight community um, actually hint at this being somewhat of a bad move because it doesn't make sense for them. It's a pre-revenue company. Therefore, because the stock is where it is, it somehow justifies um, the, the, the bearish thesis or the reason why that this wasn't a good investment in the short term. Okay. The fallacy in all that is Selling a stock or not buying a stock in the first place is one of your two options, okay? Outside of all the noise, outside of all of your hypothesis, outside all of your conviction or lack of conviction, whatever it is that you drum up in your head as far as focusing on this or any other stock in the stock market to, to, to give you the validation um, or the hesitation to either invest or not to invest in a said company it is really the, the bottom line in your decision making. And I think where we really get caught up in a lot of introducing the infinite amount of outcomes outside of those two specific uh, outcomes or decision points that you can make is when you start to live between the two. Okay. When you make a decision to buy, you stick with that decision to buy and you don't get talked off of that uh, decision to buy unless your decision to sell is completely 100% unequivocally owned by you. That's the only way that that concession can be made. And trust me, you can make that at any time. Okay. You can't handle this. You got over levered. You have too much capital to risk. You're losing your long-term vision, whatever it may be. Either it's, it's good enough to fight through right now uh, and, and stay with your conviction to buy, or you go ahead and sell. Okay. But those at the end of the day are really the only two deliberations. 
give you some examples on things that don't matter, okay? Remember and keep in the back of your mind, buying and selling a stock are the only two options with this or any other stock. But when you see comments that say the stock is going to two or the stock is going to 10 or they don't share enough information with us, okay, it, it's all that is amplifying to try to get to an end on either one of those two decision points. In other words, if you think the stock is going to two and you want to become bullish on it, then you wait till it hits two and you buy the stock. Okay. It's that simple. But I find all too often that people get caught up in this really vicious cycle of becoming um, caught up in between those two options. And if you're going to be caught in between the two options, go do something else with your time. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have conviction, to sell or not to buy, or you don't have conviction enough to buy and hold for as long as you need to see that investment work out, then I would rather see you not do it at all. Okay. Very, very important when we're discussing the, the philosophy and the, and the discussion point of, of owning a stock uh, long-term, okay. Whether or not to buy or, or hold the stock. Okay. A couple things that I mentioned from the video uh, that I picked up. Number one was the validation by the third party. Um, this is key. I heard the validation from the driver's perspective, and I heard the validation from um, the executive. Uh, and I was also very interested in understanding um, the technical application and, and, and the vision that's shared by the Hylion team. I thought that they were very stand up. Um, I, th I thought they delivered on point, uh, and, and I and at the very end of it said that they thought on their objectives was go of going up there and really validating the technology was was a slam dunk, and uh, I think they were very well received. Um, I think the interviews were genuine. I think the one gentleman that said that he had over four million uh, over the road miles of a thirty year trucker uh, with 15, 16 years standalone with Wegmans alone. Um, what was 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 key to that validation stage. I thought that was incredible. Um, the driver validation specifically when Roy, one of the drivers, talked about how important it was to be quiet and the safety element that is uh, existed in the cab uh, while driving. Just think about a huge diesel engine and becoming accustomed to having that loud noise and how that could potentially drum out. Um, somebody honking that is caught in a blind spot as you're driving the truck down the road. Think of the safety concerns that um, that could alleviate now driving these trucks um, and, and having them be significantly uh, quieter while they drive them down the road. The other thing was the um, how smooth uh, the truck drove. And the third thing is how well the regenerative braking worked. Uh, when it was tested up there with both drivers. I, I found that to be extremely telling. Um, one of the executives with Wegmans talked about the customer demands when Greg, who was the fleet specialist with Wegmans, talked about how important it was to their customers when Greg mentioned to the executive, Mr. Wegman himself, um, that the Hypertruck ERX had the ability by nature of pushing a button to shut down the onboard generator that powers the batteries and run specifically uh, BEV off, ba off batteries for up to 75 miles. He caught that right away and he said, that's amazing. That can really, really cater um, to some of our customers who, who demand that. Um, and then the... Um, manager with Wegmans talked about uh, one of many of their sustainability goals, some of their packaging, reducing the uh, landfill waste, and also eliminating fossil fuels from the, um, from the fleet itself. I thought that was key. Okay. So my closing remarks and, and my takeaway from the video is this. I expect that in the next coming months, we are going to see a similar pattern of visiting each of the innovation councils. And I think this is going to not only solidify their spot for me, for a lot of them, Ruan comes to mind, 
I haven't really seen anything other than the uh, initial unveil on on how Ruan can um, really take this solution and integrate them. I got that answer for Wegmans. Um, I didn't know Wegmans that well. I know I knew what they did, um, but it was really nice to actually see some of the execs, uh, some of the driver feedback, some of the interviews. I thought that was absolutely critical. So I do expect to see some of that stuff. W what's going to be unexpected as, a, as an investment or a dividend that comes from these meetings is going to be the follow-on order. Okay. Right now, Wegmans is, is not on the books for any type of pledge to order with Hylion. Right now, it's at zero. And, and I, I think the question becomes, if after this validation, Wegmans steps in um, and offers themselves to what I would say on the low end is a non-binding reservation order, and or they skip that reservation uh, stage, which I do think is the most appropriate right now because Hylion is ill-prepared uh, to step into mass production now anyway with both the supply chain issues um, and the supply chain hangups at the OEMs themselves. Their inability to take mass orders anyway right now could actually be a blessing in disguise. So when we're talking about a stock at 6 or $10, is that really reason enough to compromise your long-term thesis about the product that we were able to validate today? I'll let you answer that, okay? But as we look at, at, at unfolding over the next couple of months, I would expect to see some of these orders trickle in from the Innovation Council themselves. And I'm going to be paying particular attention. Remember, we have 1,590 on the books right now as we speak in non-binding uh, reservations for the Hypertruck ERX. I would love to see them solidify some of those orders with LOIs. I would love to see that fleets are able to validate enough in what they see and feel comfortable enough that those orders will inevitably be able to be rolled off of the OEM hubs and be integrated in their fleets right away. Something that I picked out of the video is that Wegmans was bothering Hylion, not the other way around. Wegmans was saying, we're ready, bring the technology up when it's ready, and it just wasn't ready. And I don't think this is any fault of any, any party at all. I just think it is a reflection of where we currently are in the product uh, development cycle um, in that uh, product val uh, validation stage, um, having gone through the internal verification stage uh, within Hylion with the assistance of FEV up in Michigan. Okay. So I, I, I just think that we, we're always quick to say too, too fast, too fast, too fast, or, or too slow, too slow, too slow. We need orders and we needed orders now. There's nobody that has been more staunch with needing some sort of catalyst, and the orders will do that. They're not going to be able to start to solidify an order book by anybody on the Innovation Council or off. I mean, if we have a rogue order from Pepsi or Amazon, it's game over, okay? It really is. Even a non-binding reservation of 10,000 ERX trucks from Amazon, it's game over. And I believe the technology is number one in the industry. There, there, there is not a competitor right now based on what I saw in the uh, uh, product validation, the testimonials that were provided, and the specifications that the ERX can provide for a large fleet like Amazon. I just think that right now we're in a waiting game until those catalysts happen. And it's our ability to forecast the probability of those catalysts happening in the future based on what we saw today. Um, if you were really reading between the lines in the Wegmans video uh, on what we are going to expect going forward, we, we just came off earnings call three weeks ago. Okay. The Monet order of 40 Hypertruck ERX that came out of nowhere. There's no doubt about that. One thing that Monet and Wegmans have in common uh, is, and Detmar is that they are all existing customers having used the, um, the, the hybrid system. Thomas Healy talked about the critical link between the hybrid system and the Hypertruck ERX. I think this is going to play dividends in providing that industry validation as a whole. They're only going to be able to keep this thing a secret for so long. And it seems like to me the stock market is assuming 
that that secret that they have is going to remain a secret and industries are not going to uh, be excited about incorporating that. I did not hear that uh, from either corporate governance in the company or the, the drivers. And, and who else does it need to matter uh, about? Is it, is it people who don't really have any vested interest in seeing highly on succeed to say that they're not going to sell product to anybody. I just didn't see that when I watched the Wegmans video. And, and, and again, I don't think they made that stuff up. I think that was very genuine. I think it was very, very well done. I, I think there was so much value to extrapolate from that. Uh, and, and, and we didn't have to infer so much uh, by the one vision that's coming to my head that I remember in my deep dive of Hylion over the last 18 months, and that's the ERX, you know, doing doing uh, um, uh, peeling out in the Hylion parking lot. That's really all we had up until this point, uh, as well as a few schematics of um, the, the the rudimentary drawings of where the components go on the truck and what the main makeup is. We got to actually see that in real life today. And I don't think that that need can be understated. I, I think uh, on, on the market down day today, uh, I think it was unfortunate. I, I think Hylion is really stuck in a rut. I really do. Um, I, I think it's just sell it now and, and don't ask any questions now on challenging um, the idea that perhaps maybe we are looking at a, a bottom. And I, I, I don't call bottoms. I don't believe it's possible. Um, there's a lot of people that I view on a lot of the different forums that I visit um, hungry for information that actually do believe uh, that they actually can forecast the bottom. And, and let, me, let me draw it to you this way. If, if at the stock, if when the stock was $9.50, somebody came out and said, the stock is going to $6, they would have been proven right but by, by no other reason than they got lucky. It's just that simple. And, and where I find the fallacy is that people look at that transaction or the time that exists between the, 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 the spew of the mouth of where they think a stock is going from an educated guess perspective, and it ends up turning, turning out right. The fallacy exists where we start to look at that and we start to put credence uh, in those types of speculative uh, um, um, uh, assessments or, or, or calculated guesses on where a stock is going, ultimately going forward is what is important. It, it is not where the stock has been, it is where it is going into the future. And I think that's something that you really need to take into a holistic account. When you're looking at a company like this, validating through third-party validation what it is that we saw today through the Wegmans video, and I've had a chance to think about it, and I think that this is a real game changer. I really do. Now, I'm not looking at the disposition of the stock to change tomorrow. I'm not looking at it changing next week. As a matter of fact, the way I feel right now is that it will never change. It will never change. Five years from now, we're going to be going through the same deliberation. Um, Hylion will have no sales. Hylion will have gone through its uh, roadshow and people say it's the greatest technology ever. It's very comfortable, but they won't have any continued uh, integration into the fleets. There will be an increase in competition in the landscape. There will be an incurred cash burn with Hylion. Maybe they've done a share issuance and they've diluted shares and they've done a capital raise with the company. Here's the thing. All of those um, things that are possible in real life, I think are highly, highly unrealistic. If you took a realistic look at this company and looked at it through the prism of opportunity, can this system uh, um, uh, perform as prescribed? Yes, that's been validated today. Can they actually draw fuel from the infrastructure grid to actually move goods tomorrow like right now, if they put this thing into service? The answer is yes. Could there be a potential for the supply chain issues to shake out sooner than later? Certainly, certainly. I think we're taking very conservative estimates or, or maybe even just drumming, drumming up some conclusions that the supply chain issues will never shake loose. 
guys, there's pressure building behind the dams to get these supply chains moving. Okay. And I think there's more chance of the dam breaking free than these supply chain issues persisting for longer than forecasted. Will Hylion not secure additional orders in 2022? I think that takes more imagination to think about based on the track record over last year and this year of securing reservations to the order book. I'd like to see a lot more variety uh, in the reservation order book. It, what I mean by that is if I get a five order reoccurring uh, order because Pepsi is looking to integrate their fleet, I'll, I'll be doing backflips because that's the difference in, I think they should be at 5,000. Uh, non-binding reservations right now. I think they should be on the phone every single day uh, with Amazon. Um, I, I've actually thought about doing it for them and securing that bid for them and then just handing it on to them with a silver platter, on a silver platter, because that's the type of things that it takes. It, focusing on the Innovation Council is great for the time being, but my angst a little bit is what have they been doing over the last 21 days since earnings? There could have been some internal uh, reporting going on on other fronts of the company. There's always different things that can be reported upon the new building, the battery technology, all the 17 million, where it went in R&D, all these different things that kind of move away from and give more of a holistic perspective on, on the goings on at Hylion can absolutely help supplement some of this downtime that we're going to incur because we just cannot uh, progress forward because of the supply chain issues. Hylion is going to have to figure out how to embolden that order book going forward, solidify some of those reservations through letters of intent to purchase, and make some of those binding pre-orders. It sounded like to me that Wegmans would be a perfect candidate to come to the table with a 15 or 20 ERX order, not through a non-binding reservation, but an actual letter of intent to purchase based on their, um, based on their um, uh, product validation through what was shared today. Mark my word, uh, expect that that could be something that we see in a short time here into the future. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning into this update on Hylion. Um, I think one of the strategies that uh, I've always looked at as, as being a win with this company, and I sleep easy with this application, and that is to buy the stock and hold it. It's just that simple. Don't be stuck being wishy-washy between the two. I can respect if you sell. I can respect if you buy. At the end of the day, I don't really care what you do with your money. I've been very, very transparent in giving you the perspective from a shareholder that is bullish on the company and absolutely has 100% conviction. And when reports like this come through of industry validation, it only just confirms my existing validation and confirmation that we are headed somewhere extremely special in the future as the Hylion solution is shared with more and more and more fleets. And eventually the domino effect will take hold and other companies are going to talk amongst themselves and say, you need to give this company a look. They know what they're doing and they blew our socks off the day that they came and validated to us. It looks like they've got the solution that's going to be the one going forward that's going to be the closest to knocking on all three of the value propositions and not just one of them. Okay. So you want to leave your comments at the bottom of the video, guys, subscribe to the message, share the message with anybody out there that you know are interested in these highly on videos, man. I post these pretty frequently because I think right now is the time where we have the absolute most disconnect between the goings on of what this company is trying to do to revolutionize the class eight space and a stock price that is that absolutely seems like it cannot go up. It just cannot go up. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I, I'm I'm absolutely um, dumbfounded. I have no other explanation other than the stock market has it wrong. It gets it wrong all the time. The history of getting it wrong with this and any other company in the past does not, and I will repeat, it does not guarantee where a stock is going to go into the future as we have not encountered the future yet, but we are marching toward that end. The question that you have to ask yourself 
is does the scenario that I drew up of the stock being $6.75 in five years make any sense to you now? If you have any conviction at all about the company and you're looking at it here at $6.35, at the time of filming this video, mark my word, I don't think within the short and medium term that the stock is going to be able to ignore the value proposition and the disconnect between what we saw today through third-party validation and a stock price that is not reflective of the value that exists on a fundamental level with this company. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future.